How's it going everyone, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you my opinion on the Fellowship and Fire season so far, going over what I like and dislike about the first season in New World. But before we get into that, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel, it helps out massively. Now, let's get into it. I've been playing through season 1 for quite a few days now, and I've been jotting down notes about positive things I've noticed, and also some negatives. Overall, it's been a very pleasant experience, and it's just really nice to have more things to do in New World, after a bit of a lull period between Brimstone's release and now. For starters, as a Fire Mage main for several months now, I've gotta say I love the buffs to the Fire Staff, and I feel a lot more powerful. Plus, not being ostracized in expeditions because of my weapon choice is pretty great too. Also, they finally added the color indicators for friendly or enemy AoE attacks, which is so helpful. It took them a bit long to implement it, but I'm just pleased it's finally here. It makes PvP so much easier knowing which areas to stand in and which to not. They also added a new story for Season 1, which will see you putting together a group of heroes to take down a new villain, which was quite entertaining. The story was overall fun, and the plot was interesting. I just felt like the quests were a bit repetitive, and I've noticed the same with other events like the Medley Fair. A lot of the missions are just go get this person, and they need one favor for them to come, then on to the next person, and they need a favor as well. It was a bit repetitive, and I would like to see a bit more variety there. Also, I'm not sure if it's just me, but the characters in cutscenes look a bit janky. I noticed it in Brimstone Sands cutscenes as well. The game is stunning, and the character models in the open world are great, but in cutscenes, they just don't hold up. Not sure if that's a hard thing to be fixed by them, or how come this is happening, but it's just something I noticed. They also gave us some new free Twitch drops, which is always appreciated. 20 hours to get all of the pieces is a bit much, but I can't complain when it's free skins. Plus, I really like the majority of the pieces, especially the hood, which is my new go-to headpiece. The Season Pass overall is a very welcome experience as well. There aren't too many items on it that I'm necessarily very excited to get, but just having more things to add to my daily routine is always a plus. And the stamp card feature is a lot of fun. I find myself going and doing stuff I would usually never do just to get some stamps, so that is definitely adding some variety to my gameplay. The revamped questing for two new zones is also a massive plus for the game because it'll make gameplay for the new players so much more enjoyable. I still have to go check them out on an alt one of these days, but the footage I've seen from some of these quests does look awesome. Plus, there was a couple of the quests that I was able to do in those new areas, even though I had already completed all the quests in those areas, and they did have some pretty entertaining storylines, and adding voiceovers just adds to the immersion. I'm excited to see how New World is going to be when they have revamped the quests in every zone, I think it'll really help with new player retention for the game. Probably the most controversial addition was the new gear slots. Everyone agrees it's an awesome and necessary feature, it was just implemented a bit poorly. Not being able to change attributes and trophies with the sets does make things a bit of a pain, plus only giving the players 3 free gear slots has gotten everyone in an uproar, especially with how many Bane sets and crafting sets there are in the game. And the price has everyone upset as well, with 5 per additional slot up to a total of 10. I agree, it could have been a bit cheaper, but if you're willing to be patient, I could see them doing sales with lower prices, plus maybe we will get another free slot every season. If you just wait a couple months, I reckon you'll be able to get your 10 slots for free. But at the same time, I think they will need to increase the 10 slot limit, due to all the different needed gear sets in the game. Following a bit of a negative theme, I did notice within the first day or two pop-ups saying that certain features had to be disabled. Plus, there was a massive glitch where players that died just before the game went down to patch, would log back in and have lost all their gear, but the devs did manage to rectify the situation. With all the delays though, I was just hoping there would be no issues like this, but then again, it is a newer studio, and if they take this as a learning experience, hopefully season 2 will go a lot smoother. I did also notice a few bow and musket players mentioning in world chat they felt a lot weaker, which is a bit of a shame for them, but they did have a very long period of dominance in OPR, and it was pretty painful to play against ranged players as a melee user, so hopefully after a few weeks of the new numbers, AGS can look back and see if maybe they nerfed some things too much or too little and rectify it. The new expedition, the Imperium Forge, was also a lot of fun. Not quite as difficult as the Brimstone one, but still lots of great visual, and especially the music. Plus I appreciated that it's a quick one to finish, so if you don't have a lot of time to play, you can still run through this dungeon. The final boss's armor can be dropped from the mutated versions, and that will make for some awesome transmogs. Additionally, the heart room that dropped from the expedition was a lot of fun too. It's a flame kick that reminded me a lot of the firebenders from Avatar. Plus it packs quite a punch. But overall, I've been loving my time with the Fellowship and Fire season so far, and it's just been great to have so many different things to be doing every day. 
I'll probably be making a second part to this video once I have completed everything and look at how long it all took and how long before season 2 starts so we can get a better idea of if there's enough content in these seasons to keep people busy during the allotted periods. Also, let me know how your experiences have been with the first season, and please consider leaving the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribing to the channel, it all helps out massively. But until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching another video. If you'd like to see more New World content, then click on any of the videos on screen now. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.